Uh, hello everyone. Today we will try to model this um, lip bulb macro shot. Uh, as you can see, the shape is not very complicated, so uh, the modeling is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, we will start by talking a little bit by, uh, about my uh, default startup file. So I'm in the layout workspace where I have three windows, my shading tab, my uh, 3D viewport, and then my camera view. Uh, in my scene collection, I have organized I have organized it a bit by separating it into three collections: cameras, lighting, and then scene, where you put your meshes. Uh, and then I also have screencast uh, enabled, so you can see my mouse clicks as well as my uh, button presses. Uh, hopefully, it will it will help you a little bit to follow along. And the um, yeah, so the first tip I'm, I'm going to share is that if, if you have a small screen and you want to work on a specific tab, so for instance, you're just starting modeling, so you have no use for shading, you can put your mouse on top of the menu you want to expand, and then you can press Control Spacebar, and it will expand that menu to take the whole screen without necessarily removing the other menus, because if you press Control Spacebar again, you will be back into your normal uh, split screen. So if you don't want to lose the way you've organized your screens, you can do that. It's it's pretty handy. Um, so I'm going to move this a little bit. I have enough space. My screen is, is a big, so this is more than enough. Uh, I will start by deleting these because we will not need them now. You can select, you can, uh, select multiple objects by pressing Shift. So you click on the first one, then Shift, click on the second one, and then X, delete. Uh, okay, so now we're going to add a, a circle with a 32 vertices by default, which is more than enough. Um, we're going to go to uh, vertex mode. You can do that by pressing tab. Uh, this menu might be a little bit different for you because I have an add-on called hard ops, but it's it's basically the same as, as this. Uh, so you can switch between the different modes here. Uh, this is vertex mode, edge mode, and then face mode. Um, or you can also use... Uh, your, your your the numbers on your keyboard one two three respectively so we're gonna select all the uh, vertices by pressing a and then pressing f to fill uh, we will go to this view and then extrude uh, hold on I'm gonna zoom out a little bit because I want it to be pretty long like this yeah and then we're gonna shift D to duplicate uh, this ring this this uh, circle yeah this part of the mesh <laughs> and then uh, press z so we will move it along the z-axis move it up a little bit uh, and then extrude which by default will be when you when you extrude it's it's by default constraint to the z-axis so you don't have to press z again uh, i think this is yeah this is enough and then we want we want this edge to be uh rounded so we're gonna press Control B for bevel, and then you can use your mouse scroll wheel to uh, choose the number of of, uh, of edges. In this case, uh, yeah, this is enough. And then we will go to face mode by clicking this. Uh, then go back to X view, extrude a little bit, move up. Uh, yeah, just so you know, guys, this this doesn't have to be exact. Okay, you can you can like you can choose the shape you want at the end. So it's not it's not we're not using a reference, which is not optimal, by the way. You should always work with references, but in in this case, we're not. So it doesn't have to be uh, really precise. Uh, so here we're gonna extrude and then right click to cancel the extrusion. And then press S to scale. Hold on, I'm going to move to this view. Press S to scale till it matches uh, the bottom part. And then extrude a little bit up until here. Okay, this is good. <laughs> okay, now we're going to add some uh, modifiers. We're first going to add a bevel modifier. Uh, we could also shade auto smooth, shade auto smooth this as well. Oh yeah, sorry, um, 
I forgot to do something. Uh, so ideally we want to separate these two objects, right? Because uh, in case you want to choose uh, different textures or, co or, or colors for them, you're, gonna, you're going to have to create uh, different material slots and then assign those materials depending on the selection. It may be easier sometimes to have them separate. So we're going to go back to edit mode, um, click on a vertex in the object we want to separate, and then press L. L means linked, so it will select all the vertices that are linked to the first vertex you selected. And since these two objects are physically separated, we're going to have uh, two separate objects. So you're going to you will want to press P and then by selection. So this is the method by which we choose to separate these two objects, which is going to be selection. Uh, so now it create it created a, a separate object, as you can see. Uh, Okay, so we will go back to our modifier tab and then we added a bevel. Uh, we'll up the bevels a little bit. Uh, so we're going to change this after. And then we will add a subdivision modifier. You can either do this here or the shortcut is control one, two, or three, depending on the number of subdivisions you want. So in this case, I want three. I'm going to press control three. Uh, I usually like to have uh, the render with, with more uh, levels than the viewport, so uh, probably leave three here and put four in the render. Uh, so we will change the amount of the bevel to see what, okay, this is, this is decent. And then uh, to copy the modifiers from this object to this one, uh, we're gonna select uh, our, I always keep forgetting whether it's the, which one to select first, whether it's the source or the, <laughs> Uh, we'll try it, hold on. I think it's the source first. So we select, uh, sorry, I think it's the, yeah, it's the destination first. So we select the destination, uh, which means the object to which we want to copy the modifiers. And then you select the, the, the source object and then press Control C, copy modifiers. And now we have those modifiers on this with the same uh, settings. Uh, hold on, I'm going to move this a bit because it was, uh, the gap is a little too much. I'm gonna move it down a little bit. Yeah, this is fine. This is better. Okay. Um, I think. Yeah, I think this is it for the model. Um, we're gonna hold on. I. You can also. Uh, even if you have the bevel modifier, it doesn't mean you can't add bevel. So with the bevel, you can also add mod. Uh, other bevels manually if you want. So in this case, I want the bottom, to the the base to be quite, not quite, but a little bit round. So I'm gonna press Control B. Oh, my bad. I need to apply the scale first of all, because okay. So you noticed how when I tried to bevel, uh, it's there's there's clearly something wrong here. So so as you noticed when I tried to bevel, uh, things didn't work properly, and I figured out the reason why. It's really simple. Uh, so I made a mistake at this timestamp. If you go back, you'll see that um, I extruded and then I pressed, uh, I clicked the right, uh, right mouse button, but then I didn't press Control Z to undo the the extrusion. So I ended up having two two edges, two, yeah. And so I filled one and the, the other one is still there, not, not filled. So we can see it here. Uh, I disabled the subdivision just so it does, uh, it's not slow. So if if I move this face along these edges by pressing G G G twice, you can see that yeah we have a face here and then we also have this edge which is still here. So that's what caused the problem. So we can simply fix it by deleting this face, and then uh, we select this edge and then F to fill. And now uh, when I try to bevel with Control B, it will probably work properly. Uh, we don't want the bubble to be too much. Plus, we're not even going to see this part of the mesh, so it's, it's kind of uh, useless. <laughs> um, okay, so I will bring back my bevel. My subdivision, sorry. Uh, okay, I think we're finished with the, the modeling part. Yeah, I, I, I went back and corrected the mistake just to tell you that uh, when stuff usually goes wrong, it's most likely not Blender's fault. 
you have done a mistake somewhere or your you didn't your scale is not good you haven't applied your scale or your rotation or location or something but yeah it's it's not blender's fault i, I can assure you that it's yeah you need to just check if your mesh is uh uh, yeah, another tip to maybe if you have issues with a mesh is you can go to edit mode, press A to select all. Uh, you can go to uh, mesh and then clean up. And then here you have some options where you can that can help you. So for instance, if you have overlapping geometry, uh, you can uh, click on this one, merge by distance, which will uh, remove overlapping vertices. This maybe sometimes can help you if, if you have issues and you can't figure it out. Okay, so now we will move to texture in. Um, we will start by making uh, the shade in, yeah, the shader editor a little bigger. Um, so you can either do this in the material preview, I think it's called, or the rendered preview, uh, depending on on your, if, if your GPU can take the, Preview it's personally I find it better. Uh, right now you might wonder where this slider is coming from. It's because I'm using a uh, an HDRI. If I put this here, it's going to be black. Uh, I'm using an HDRI from uh, HDRI he Heaven. Uh, by default, it's this one is called Abandon Slip Away. But uh, I like this when I'm doing product rendering. I usually use the studio ones with high contrast. Uh, I will put a link in the description. Uh, so you can download that exact one uh, but I will fetch mine in the asset browser so if I go to polyhaven HD arise indoor studio and then high contrast uh, yeah this one is I think I like this one a lot the studio small tree yeah it's it's a little bright but we're gonna tweak it a little bit so it's it's gonna look better um, first of all, we can name our uh, meshes here. We can call this one body, and then this one is going to be called top. Da. Uh, so we're going to start by texturing the, the top part. Uh, this is going to be simple. It's nothing fancy. Uh, I'm using an add-on called Node Preview that shows uh, notes, but you, you don't you don't need it. Um, yeah, you can zoom in into an object by pressing um, by pressing period, numpad period. Uh, so it's it's a handy way to quickly uh, center your viewport into that object. Um, so I will go with a one second. I'm I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I will go with a purple color. Uh, it's a little bit dark, maybe. Yeah. Something like this. Uh, we will add a noise texture with a bump node. We're gonna plug the color into the height and the normal into the normal. The scale is really small, so we're gonna up it to something like 500. We don't want it to be very, no yeah, we want it to be very subtle. So um, uh, we're gonna reduce the strength. A lot of people like to keep the strength one and then reduce the distance. I think I also noticed that it gives better results. So I'm going to put something like 0 0.05. Yeah, we can tweak this like later on when we, when we do the lighting and we set up the scene. <laughs> um, okay, as for the the bottom, uh, it's also going to be a principal BSDF. But this time around, uh, since we want... Uh, to put our logo or label on 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 this part, we're gonna have to load the uh, an image texture. Sorry, uh, but before that, hold on. If I switch to preview mode, because we will have to unwrap this for the label. Uh, if I switch to edge mode, so I will add an edge here uh, by pressing Control R, then uh, left click, and then you can control where you put it. I'll put it a little to the top here. And then I can put another one to just constrain the zone in which the label is going to be. But I can move this one as well. So if you alt click this edge, you can move it uh, by pressing uh, G, G twice. 
and then z to constrain it along the z-axis. Uh, wait, hold on, the gg should find, yeah, sorry, I pressed g once, that's why I was moving. You don't have to constrain it along the z-axis if you press g twice. Uh, okay, we'll put it here, I think this is fine. Uh, so, let's see, I'm going to view, uh, I'll put this at purple color as well, maybe a little bit different. I also want this to be metallic, so put the metallic value to 1. Uh, you, you always want the metallic value to be either 0 or 1, because something like this does not exist in, in real life, so you don't, it's, it's either metallic or it's not. Uh, so you put it to one, uh, the roughness, I'm going to up it up a little bit because I want, I don't want uh, harsh reflections, I want them to be a little soft. Uh, okay, 0 0.8 I guess. We'll see, I, as I said, we'll change this later on. It's, it's no biggie. Uh, okay, so I will, hold on a second, I will drag my projects. Yeah, my uh, image image texture into this into the the shader editor. I will put it. Uh, I will put it in the description. I will put a link where you can download this label. Uh, it's a simple label I made on on Photoshop. Uh, okay, logo. Yeah, so you can just you can just drag it uh, to your scene, or you can uh, you can do Shift A, search for image texture. And then open and then look it up in your PC. It's the same thing. It's faster if you drag it. Uh, okay, so let me check my... Uh, because this is actually the second time I'm doing this project. I, I did it first uh, on my own before I did I um, before I recorded this tutorial. Uh, I'm just making sure that I'm doing things right. Uh, logo. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we will UV unwrap after this. So uh, the way we're going to do it is um, we're going to add a mix shader be, uh, because we want to, we want to, we will be using two BSTFs that we will use to control the color of the logo as well as the color of the object itself. Um, so we will um, shift D to duplicate this principal BSTF. Uh, we'll make this one a little bit gray. Uh, and then I will plug, we will add a color ramp as well. We'll plug the color into the factor, and then the color into the factor of the mix shader. And then this one is going to go here. This one is going to go here. Okay, okay, okay. All right. This is our setup at the moment. Um, okay, so uh, before we do the unwrapping, we will uh, bring up our UV editor. Yeah, I already have my, my logo here because when you import an image texture, it automatically gets added to this menu here. Um, so we will select the faces in which we want our, sorry, I will, you will have to be in face mode. And then I will select the faces in which I want my logo to appear. Let's say, uh, wait, hold on, actually, let, let me move this edge a little bit down. I want it to be a little bigger. Uh, so I have more space to work with. Uh, so let's say I want these three okay let's say it's these how many are there one two three four eight these eight faces you select them then you press u unwrap and then you'll you will have them in your uv editor um hold on i think it's great because we need to swap these two yes uh you can disable this to be able to see uh, what's happening without um what is it called that the overlays um, okay, so if we select uh, our um, and it's not showing because uh, my image is actually a transparent image, so what I need to plug here is not color but rather uh, alpha. Um, 
and uh, you can see we're starting to see something here. Uh, I don't want, I, I want it to be uh, horizontal to the stick, so I will rotate it. And pre and uh, you can uh, press Control to be able to rotate with, uh, I think, 10 degrees. Yeah, not 5 degrees. Yeah, you can see at the top. So it's more precise. We will go, we will rotate it to 90 and then scale it up. Uh, you can see it's repeating. So what you can do here is uh, change this one to clip. Okay. This this part is just a uh, adjusting. So you can you can uh, you can change it to however you like. Doesn't have to be the exact same thing I'm doing. So uh, I think it's too stretched. Okay, so once you set up your uh, your label, however you like, uh, you can notice that we can use this. This is the purpose of the mix shader. We can use this principle BSDF to control the color of the uh, of the label. So you can put it in the block if you want. Uh, I usually put it. Yeah, I think dark gray might. Yeah, dark gray might be better. I don't know. It's up to you. You do whatever you like. Uh, another thing we can do to make the label pop off a little more is um, we can add it as a on the normal map. So uh, we can select these two nodes, Shift D to duplicate them, uh, and then we will add a bump map. We'll Plug the color into the height and the normal into the normal. Yeah, if if you want to see the result of a certain node, if you don't have the node preview, you can just press Control Shift and then click on that said node. And it will you will have a preview of it uh, on on your on your viewport. Yeah, that this this uh, shortcut automatically plugs it into the surface. So we'll go back to the mix shader. Now, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's very subtle, but like you can see that it, it looks like it's, if, if I, so if I, uh, you can press M to mute a certain node. If I mute it, look, it's very bland. It's like, you you can see that it's it's just a text uh, written on top. But if, if, if you use the bump node, it looks engraved. Yeah, you can use invert to choose whether you want to move it upward or, or inwards. So if, yeah, inverted looks like it's uh, going, in, which I think looks better actually. So I'll leave it that way. Okay, so now we'll move on to light in and rendering. Um, first of all, I will change the color of this to something like this. Okay, so we'll go to viewport shading, we'll enable overlays, we'll add a, yeah, when you go to a certain view and add a camera, it will automatically point to that view, so I'll go to X and then add a camera, uh, we'll switch here to the 3D viewport and then press uh, 0 on your right numpad to switch to your camera. And then you can press Control B, and then select the zone of your camera so that you render only what's inside. Okay, if you if we switch render, we're not gonna see what's outside. Uh, we will switch to uh, orthographic view, and when you switch to orthographic view, uh, the the distance between your camera and object no longer matters, so we can move it away, and you see it doesn't change anything in the uh, rendered view. The only thing that matters is your, is your orthographic scale. I press G to move this a little bit. Okay. Uh, so, OK, 
Okay, first of all, I think I want to move this a bit still. Yes, okay. So we can parent these two objects so that when I move the body, uh, the top uh, part moves with it as well. Um, first of all, I need to move my camera into my camera's collection. Oh yeah, sorry. Oops. So you select your body and then your top and then uh, control P, keep object, keep transform. So now when I move my, oh, sorry, I always forget, yeah. So now you select your uh, top part and then body and then control P. You always select the parent last. Uh, object, keep transform. And now when I move the body, the top is also gonna move with it. Um, so we will duplicate, I have them both selected, right? We will go to top view and then we'll duplicate them. Shift D, uh, X to move them along the X axis. Shift D again, X. And Shift D, X. Uh, you can see them because my camera is on the other side, yes. Okay, I will rotate my camera. So what I will do, I want to rotate it around my uh, my 3D cursor. So I will I I will use uh, you can change it you can change it here, but I I have it on my uh, mouse. You know the two buttons. Uh, I think they're called four and five on your mouse. I added them as a quick favorite, but you can do it here as well. You can change it to a 3D cursor, and then rotate Z. Then you can press control to make it 90 degrees. Good. Okay, so now uh, GX. I actually want it to be a little closer. Yeah, like this. Don't forget, guys, it doesn't have to be exact. Uh, what I will do here is rotate this. Uh, I will go back to individual origin. Uh, yeah, so I, I will put my 3D cursor by pressing Shift and then uh, right click. So now my 3D cursor is here, so this will be the axis of rotation. So when I rotate the object, it will rotate around this cursor like this, yeah, to try to get the look that we see in the we saw in the picture. So I'll move it a little bit like this, and then this one. We can tweak it later on. Uh, I want to have more control around my camera, so. Uh, you can use, uh, if you press N, you can go to, there's a menu called View, and then you can press uh, Lock Camera to View, so that when you move uh, your viewport, it will, the camera will follow. Uh, I, I, uh, I put this on a quick favorite, so the way you do that is you right click on it, and then uh, assign short, uh, yes, you will, you will have Add two quick favorites. I have removed because I already have it. So for me, uh, press N to remove this menu, or press Q, and then quick favorites. Yeah, lock camera to view. Okay, now I have it enabled, so when I rotate, the camera will follow, which is what I want. Let me rotate this on the yeah, I will change this to individual origins. Just to show the... Okay. Uh, I want to be... I want my text to be... Uh, 
easier to read, so I will rotate my camera. No, sorry, I need to select it. And Okay, now we will add our background, it will be a plane, we'll scale it, R, X, 90, then we can move it, we'll scale it again, new material, we'll name it background, I want my background to also be Purple. Okay, so now I will sort of turn off my maybe, yeah, 0 0.1. I will turn off my HDRI and add a light. Scale GZ. Uh, I noticed something, uh, this is not ideal, but I already duplicated my <laughs> top parts. Uh, I'm not sure if, yeah, this seems like it's too much. Uh, I'll, I'll check it later. Yeah, maybe I want, I want, I want to bevel this a little more, we'll see. Uh, okay, so we will... Rotate our light a little bit. Um, actually, I want to show the center part a little bit, so I will rotate this. Yeah, there you go. I just want the inside to sh show up a little bit. It's just a little data I like. Okay, let's see, let's check the materials on this. This is, this, this part is up to you. You can you can tweak uh, this however you like. Uh, I will add another light this is going to be my rim light uh rotate it x90 and then i will move it behind our objects um, scale x i want it to be scale z is uh, hold on sorry individual origin scale z just because i want to highlight our uh, lip bulbs Okay, it's too much. Is the noise texture even visible? It's a little hard to see because of the because of the the de noise. I think if I turn off the noise, yeah, I will do. I, I will render it and then I will see. It's fine. Uh, Maybe for the top part, I'm just checking my uh, my previous render to to make sure. Uh, and roughly zero point four. Okay, let's try that. This is on the yeah. 0.3, okay. Yeah, we want the light to reflect a little bit on the surface. And then, uh, 0.20. 
What if I reduce the angle on this one, maybe? Okay, I will add another, yet another light to uh, to make my background a little, to show the color of my background. Rotate a little bit, and then Uh, I think I will change the color so it's because this feels like yeah this is pink not purple uh, it's here uh, I think it's best if I hold on I will copy them from my project I'll copy the hex codes. I, I will put it in the description for you, if you want. Yeah, this is light, but it's... Maybe the light, yeah, it's, I think it's the light, and we need to adjust it. Okay. Uh, I just light is way too harsh. Um, I will also copy the hex code from the top part. Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to make it similar to my previous project. That's why I'm doing this. Yeah. So I noticed that these are way too sharp. Um, this is not ideal because we've already uh, we've already duplicated our objects so it's not the best but you usually want to finish modeling your object before you continue okay so I selected all of these edges and then I'm going to press ctrl B to bevel Yeah, I'm also checking uh, the render view to see how they look. Yeah, this this looks fine. This looks fine. It's better. Yeah, you never want uh, harsh edges. Okay, so hold on, let me check. I think this light is way too bright. Uh, what if I make it? Yeah, I, I make it. I'll put the roughness to one. I don't want any reflections from the background. Wait, what color did I pick in my project? Let me check. Hmm. Okay, I'll use this one. Does this look fine? What can I add? If I move this, let's see. All right, I don't want my rim light effect to affect the top, so. Turn, turn it down a little bit. And then I will create a separate light for the top part. So area, scale it up. I'll change it to um, disk. I don't know why, I just like it. And then I will rotate it so that it hits the top. Add a little bit of intensity. Maybe turn down the spread.
Okay, this whole part is just tweaking all the parameters until you get something you're satisfied with. Doesn't have to be the exact same. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be the same. You can change it however you like. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe this is way too dark. Yeah, no, this is worse. Okay, this is this is better, I think. Uh, what if I change the this texture? Use a musk grave instead. Let me see. Uh, you can swap um, a node by pressing by clicking on the node and pressing Shift S. And then uh, S for switch, so you can switch it for a Musgrave. I think Musgrave is what I used um, on my previous project, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check. Yes, that's what I did, and it turned out better than the noise texture. You tr you try you try both, and then you get you choose well uh, the one you like. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> What if I turn this to zero? Yeah, see the the HDRI is sometimes really good to fill in the details. Sometimes you have parts of your you have parts of your uh, of your scene that are not that are black. You unless unless you want to highlight us, unless you want to highlight shadows for for very specific reasons or. Uh, it's like a stylized. It's it's not good to have a lot of dark spots in your render, I think. Um, so yeah, I think this is it. Uh, the rest is probably done in post. So you can render this and then you can put it on in uh, Photoshop, and you can do all sorts of post processing, which will make it pop a lot more. That's what I did. And. Uh, Oh, uh, before that, um, let's add some. Uh, hold on, I will add an empty. Let's add some depth of field. I'll scale that up so it's more visible. I will put my empty on right on the text, so that the text is the center of the of the action, right? Um, I will move my empty to my cameras collection. And then in my camera, I can go to uh, camera parameters and then turn on depth of field and choose my empty as the uh, focus object. So now if I turn down the f-stop, you can see, it gives a very nice effect you can play with. Okay. Uh, I will rotate this on the, lo on the local z-axis, so R, Z, Z, just to center it a little bit, okay, yeah, I think this is good, maybe I want uh, to switch to 3D cursor, I want to rotate this, maybe I want more I actually want more reflection here. I might need to. Um, yeah, this is way this is way too overexposed. No. You can press when you select light. You can press Shift T, so you can control exactly where it drops. Maybe I'll put it down here a little bit, and then I will. Change spread. Okay, this looks good. I think, I think this is fine. Um, one last part is uh, before render is. Uh, let me check my my. Uh, so yeah, I'm using cycles. Obviously, uh, you can change the render settings depending on your. Uh, I usually I think on my final render I usually put it to a thousand. Uh, I use open image I, for for my viewport denoising. I use optics because it's faster. If you have a 
uh, an NVIDIA GPU card that supports optics. But for rendering, I use uh, Open Image Denoise because it just gives better results. That's what I noticed. I uh, as for the number of bounces, light bounces, I haven't touched that. Uh, view transform is always set to filmic for me. You can use standard, but I feel like filmic gives better results. Uh, it has a more yeah maybe cinematic look. I don't know. Uh, the look I always set to high contrast or medium high, depending on yeah, depending on the scene. Yeah, that's it for the yeah for the resolution. You can you can choose whatever resolution you like. I set it to three thousand. If for instance, if you're posting it on Instagram, you want a square. Uh, you want a square format for a post, and if you're putting it as a posting it for your story you can also uh, use uh, this resolution which turns out pretty good it's usually decent um, what we can do as well is uh, in compositing uh, in my in my default setup file i have i always have two nodes that are uh, in a yeah muted by default which are glare and lens distortion i think they always uh, give a, a a good effect so if I enable glare you can see you can tweak the mix until you're satisfied and then you can also uh, add the lens distortion yes which uh, gives this um, you know the way the colors start to separate at the end it, it simulates the uh, how a real camera works I think which I think it looks cool that's why I use it Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. If you've made it this far, I would like to thank you a lot because, uh, yeah, I would like to thank you a lot for your patience because this tutorial might be a little bit scuffed. <laughs> I don't know. You'll be the judge of that uh, since it's my first ever tutorial. And uh, hopefully I will improve by making more tutorials, I guess. Uh, if you have any remarks or questions, yeah, especially questions if there is something you don't understand, or something that I haven't clarified a lot, you can uh, ask me the question in the comment section and I will try to respond. So yeah, have a great day and uh, make sure to smile.